Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Spin Rack. Hey, I'm here with my boy, Cal. Give shout outs, Cal. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Ready to rock. Today, we're talking about the new news that came out and news is, uh, for the new Flashpoint or Flash movie or the Flashpoint movie. Not sure what exactly they're going to call it right now, but they've just um, scored another actress, uh, another actor to be part of it. And the person is Sasha Kaye. She will be the upcoming Supergirl on the new uh, Flash movie. My goodness, this is a, on top of that, she's a US born American, hear that American Colombian um, actress. She was on the Young and the Restless. And you know, this is who they're choosing now to be the new Supergirl. What is your take on our on Supergirl, this new Supergirl, um, Cal? Give me a heads up. I'm wondering why she's appearing in the Flash film. You know, we haven't seen anybody else cast. We haven't heard of any villains anything else going on with this film or even that it's actually still, well i guess it's still happening since she's been cast i suppose but we haven't really heard anything else about the film and now we're hearing this particular bit of casting yeah and um i agree with you i think that the big thing here is that flash is like turning out to be like a little mini uh justice league where they're having batman is going to be in there i don't know if ray fisher is still going to be in there that's possible superman if this no he's out Okay, so he's out. So it's a Ray Fisher is all the way out, <laughs> but that's what he wanted. You know, I don't know, probably break his contract. I don't know, go buy Marvel off him or something. You know, here is um, Marvel's not uh, dealing with that. Uh, Marvel's not dealing with him. Get out of here! Come on. <laughs> Here's a picture of Sasha Sasha Kale, Kaye with um, uh, an image of um, Supergirl. So as you can see, she's clearly not blonde. You know, but that's going to have to be one of the things that they're going to make an easy remedy by, you know, hair dye and stuff like that. Um, so it shouldn't be a big problem. The question is, can she pull off the role? And hopefully they'll give her a big role, not just some minor role in the back. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Supergirl is a cipher. <laughs> Supergirl is a cipher. Supergirl has been comics for decades and she doesn't really have any character. Okay. She pretty much does whatever they tell her to do. She's not Superman or Captain America. Or good, or even Ms. Marvel. At the end of the day, she really doesn't have char She really doesn't have characters. So, all that you, I mean, aside from the fact that she's supposed to come here from Krypton, be blonde and attractive, there's really not a lot more that you need to hit in terms of getting this character going. What do they like to do now? They always want to have her with some sort of contentious relationship with Superman, at least initially, when she gets there, and then you know she acclimates to Earth. That's how they've been doing it unfortunately for the last few times that she's that she's appeared but you know other, otherwise this is not a heavy lift as to hey can you think you can pull this off like hey are you attractive check blonde check all right bro i mean i kind of disagree with you on that i think that yeah i know i agree with the basic premise that yes supergirl hasn't been given a lot over the course of the year so and uh you know and i think that's just a possibility that dcs so they just haven't focused enough to probably develop the character to where it needs to be. You know, uh, you know the same thing with the Bat family. You have all these Bat characters and the super characters. So I guess I, that makes a lot of sense. But, you know, characters, people come in with new characters, and if they can develop them themselves or inspire and give um, additional, um, you, know, um, you know, stories to them, people are intrigued and they want to see more. And one of the best examples is the Punisher was a villain in... Um, what Punisher was a Daredevil in the, in the Netflix Marvel Daredevil show. And he was so popular coming on the show that they gave him a spinoff show. And this was not planned. And you never know. If she does a great job, she can probably be the new Supergirl and, and kill it. You never know. So, I mean, I give everybody the option to say, hey, you go in there and you kill that role. And uh, especially if they give you the opportunity, the space to do what you need to do to develop the character within that particular um, vehicle, you never know what could happen. And that's all I'm saying. You know, give her a chance. You know, and we'll see what happens. You know? I, don't, I don't think anybody's not. I don't, I don't think anyone's not going to give you know give the actress a chance. There's no reason not to give the actress a chance. There's no big lift in terms of, in terms of Supergirl. I was wondering if because one of the things I was remembering the chatter I heard about the Flash film that this was supposed to be something that would allow the DC extended universe in terms of the films to reboot. So I'm thinking, is this actually? Supergirl that, you know, the traditional Supergirl, Kara zor blonde, you know, from the, from Krypton, or is this an alternative universe Supergirl who could look just like the actress, and that's how they could, you know, uh, start the bridge that they want to do from the DCU they have now 
to the one that they want to go to. But, you know, it's still really early and I'm really low. To I really don't like to speculate about stuff like that. That's a pretty interesting idea. I will, yes, we will speculate about that later in another episode. But in terms of um, the character, uh, one of the problems I tend to see with a lot of these new characters and sometimes some of the female characters is that because these ensemble things, yes, it's going to be Flash himself is definitely going to be the focus, but you're hearing about all these different things where you're going to have Ben Affleck, you may have Ben Affleck, you may have Michael Keaton being Batman, you may have Henry Cavill being there. There may be additional characters, like there's going to be a mini Justice League. And when you have these big characters, it's harder for newer and younger um, characters to stand out unless they get enough space to do it. Uh, a, good, a great example I thought was in um, the Justice League with, with um, um, Ray Fisher. You know, his character, according to him and according to others that I've read, that he was supposed to have a much bigger role in um, the movie. And of course, probably that'll show up in the Snyder Cut. I'm not seeing that in the commercials per se, but in terms of um, his importance to the story and stuff. Whereas in the Justice League movie by Whedon, it wasn't quite that way. And, you know, he fell into a little bit of the background relative to the big, the big guns, you know, Wonder Woman, Superman, um, Batman, excuse me, put it in proper order, Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman. And so, you know, we felt like, okay, cyborg, cyborg, you know what I'm trying to say? It, it, it rocks off. Aquaman, Aquaman was great there too. So I, I think that he, I think that we have to put it in context as to as to what could or couldn't happen there. Um, you know, I, I know you agree with me. You usually always agree with me. No, disagree. But uh, Ray Fisher, Ray Fisher didn't want to do the film, so that was that. All right, then. You know, listen, if anybody likes anything else, if they want to hear more about this, please put something in the comments. Like, you know, subscribe. Spin a rack. Out. Rock on, Supergirl. Rock on. <laughs>